What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today we're going to be doing a speed test between the two cheapest iPhones currently sold by Apple here in 2022. So we have the brand new iPhone SE 3 and the iPhone 11. So these were released nearly three years apart and they are two totally different phones in almost every way. But today we're only testing out one thing performance. I want to see if the iPhone SE can outperform the iPhone 11 in multiple categories. So we're going to be testing the app launching speeds, how each phone handles intensive gaming, how smooth web browsing is with tons of tabs opened. We're going to test the RAM performance, Wi-Fi speeds, and more. And before we get into the speed test, let's go ahead and lay out the specs for both devices to see what we're working with. So the iPhone SE has the A15 Bionic chip and four gigabytes of RAM. The iPhone 11 has the A13 Bionic chip and also four gigabytes of RAM. All right, so first things first, a boot up test. So let's go ahead and turn both of these off and turn them back on to see which one boots up quicker. All right, so let's boot up in three, two, one, press at the exact same time on both. Also, both have the same amount of data on them as I did a restore on the iPhone 11 to emulate the iPhone SE. So let's see which one boots up first. So there we go, SE is up and we're still waiting on that iPhone 11. So let's go ahead and put in our passcode here. So yeah, we got first on the iPhone SE. Now we do also have Face ID versus Touch ID and getting to the home screen, I think Touch ID is faster just because when you press that home button, it takes you straight to the home screen. Whereas with Face ID, when it recognizes your face, you still have to swipe up to get to that home screen. Of course you can do it in one motion, but still I find that Touch ID seems to be faster to get to the home screen than Face ID in most cases. But of course it will depend on how you use your iPhone. All right, so we're gonna start off with an app launching test. So as you can see, we don't have any applications open on either device. Let's go ahead and open up Twitter first, press at the same time, open at about the same time as well. So let's go ahead and find the same tweet here. Let's go to the share sheet at the same time on both, see which one pulls that up first. Let's go to share, share via, and looked about the same to me. I didn't really tell a difference. Let's go to messages. And that looked like it was first on the iPhone SE. Let's go into Instagram. Instagram was first on the SE. You can see that it loaded up the content first. Let's go into Reddit. Reddit loaded up first on the SE as well. So the SE definitely beating out the iPhone 11. Let's go to YouTube. YouTube first on the SE as well. Let's go to Twitch. Twitch was first on the SE. Let's go to Discover. SE as well. Browse. That was about the same. Let's go to Warzone. That was about the same as well. So opening up the app was faster on the SE, but everything else in the app was about the same speed. Let's go to Amazon. Amazon looks like it's first on maybe slightly the SE. Didn't really look like there was much of a difference there. Let's go to TikTok. TikTok loaded up first on the SE. ESPN. ESPN also first on the SE. Man, that is just dominating the iPhone 11 right now. So let's move on to something a little bit more intensive. Let's move on to some gaming here. So we're gonna try out Subway Surfers first. Let's launch it in three, two, one. Press at the exact same time here. And as far as heat goes, they both feel about the same in heat. I think the iPhone SE is actually getting a little bit warmer than the iPhone 11. But you can see there, just killed the iPhone 11 opening up Subway Surfers. Now let's see if they perform the same in the game in terms of gameplay. We're looking for any type of lag or any type of skipping of frames. And I don't think there's going to be any just because this is a very light game. It's not very intensive. I will say the experience is better on the iPhone 11, though, because of that display. Uh, it's kind of hard to play on both of these phones and talk at the same time, but they look about the same in terms of the performance. I think, again, the experience is better on the iPhone 11 just because it has that bigger display, but really no difference in terms of how the game actually runs on either device. Let's move on to Crash Bandicoot. Press at the exact same time. Looks like we got the screen first on the SE. Again, the SE definitely feels a little bit more warm than the iPhone 11 right now. We'll see if that continues. I will be monitoring that, but here we go. Let's see. iPhone SE is definitely in the lead. Let's see if the iPhone 11 can catch it. No, the iPhone SE by a few seconds there over the iPhone 11. Let's move on to Asphalt 9. 3, 2, 1. Press at the same time here. Let's see which one loads up first. Looks like the SE is getting to the display screen first. We got some sound from the iPhone SE. Let's see if that means anything or if we get there first on the 11, but no, we got there first on the iPhone SE. Still waiting on the 11 here. Still waiting. There we go. So finally on the iPhone 11. Now let's go into PUBG in three, two, one. 
pressed at the same time on both once again. And let's see if we have any difference in speed here, any substantial difference. So already looks like the SE is ahead with that A15 Bionic chip inside. We're gonna check for updates here. Looks like we have a minor update for both and it's the same size, very, very minor update. So there we go, we're on the iPhone SE first, still waiting on the 11 and there we go. So a few seconds difference, I actually expected a little bit more of a difference there with such an intensive game like that. Let's move on to Call of Duty in three, two, one. Press at the same time here. We're also logged in on two different accounts, so there's gonna be no difference in terms of logging in on one device and not the other. So there we go fully there. So it looks like a few seconds behind is the iPhone 11. We're just now logging in. So it might be like a 10 second difference here, at least a 10 second difference. So much bigger difference on Call of Duty versus PUBG. There we go. So at least a 10 second difference, which is pretty interesting. Now there's actually some choppiness in the iPhone 11 with Call of Duty. So there's no choppiness on the iPhone SE. I've not had that once. We had it on the loading screen for the iPhone 11, which is pretty interesting, which tells me the gameplay is also going to be a little bit choppy, at least a little bit more than the iPhone SEs. So here we go. I'm trying to shoot this guy and performs great on the SE. I mean, there's really no chop at all, no lag that I've noticed so far. Let's go ahead to the iPhone 11 now and see if there's any difference here. So running around, looking around, no choppiness yet. Oh, there's a skip frame right there. Do you guys see that? There's a skip frame. Nothing so far. So we had the little skip frame right there. We had that during the intro scene to get on this map as well. Like when it was loading, there was a difference and lag in terms of frame skipping. So let's see if there's anything with this explosion here. Nope, didn't look like there's any lag there, but it's just come and go. It doesn't seem to really be dependent on what's going on in the game. Maybe if there's like a big kill streak, we would see a difference. But so far there are, yeah, you saw right there, there's another frame drop. So just the occasional lag here, and I wasn't seeing that with the iPhone SE. So we're gonna run around the map a little bit more here on the SE just to show you guys as well that there's definitely a difference in terms of the smoothness of how a game like Call of Duty plays. So we're gonna run around the map just like we were on the iPhone 11. And you can see there's really no lag or any type of choppiness here with the iPhone SE, very impressive. And that is that A15 Bionic chip doing its work again this is the same chip that we found on the iphone 13 so it's not all too impressive that it's performing so well but it still is when we're comparing you know something like the iphone 11 to such a cheap device like the iphone se so yeah overall performance definitely better on the iphone se when it comes to really intensive games when it comes to less intensive games really light games like your subway surfers your crash bandicoots those are going to be the difference in like loading speeds it's going to load faster on the se but the overall gameplay is not really going to be any different on the se or the iphone 11. and now we're going to move on to a very intensive game nba 2k22 and i have not opened up the app on either device so it's going to be both devices first time opening up this application let's press at the same time here in three two one press at the same time let's see which one gets there first it's upside down for some reason so let's go ahead and flip these and we'll see which one gets to the home screen first looks like the iphone 11 not a huge difference looks like we signed in first here on the uh, on the se actually first so let's go ahead and tap and see if there's a difference all right so we're going to tap on play game at the same time in three two one let's see if we can get there first on one or the other let's go to play and looks like I missed it here on the SE. <laughs> so really late start for the SE. Let's see if it can catch up and somehow beat the iPhone 11. I doubt it, but let's see. So iPhone 11 is there. iPhone SE definitely loaded up first. It didn't quite catch up to the 11, but you can see the difference here and speed. It's pretty much all caught up now, like, like a second difference now between the two, even though this got like a three second or the iPhone 11 got a three second head start. I want to see if there's a difference in gameplay though, and see if there's any choppiness in either and which one kind of just plays better. So I'm going to play it off camera and let you guys know if one plays better than the other. So I'm not really seeing a big difference between these two. They both feel about the same in terms of performance. And there's really not a big heat difference either. Both are getting a little bit warm. I think the iPhone 11 is getting more warm during the gaming part of this video. The SE was getting warm earlier on, but it looks like the iPhone 11 is getting a lot more warm to the touch now when playing these games, especially close to the bottom of the phone down here. I can definitely feel it warming up a lot more than the iPhone SE. But in terms of overall gameplay, they both perform about the same. Now, I also wanted to go into the camera application and do some things in camera to see if there's any difference. So we're gonna open up the camera at the same time and look like they both loaded at the same time we got the focus square right there first on the se though so let's switch over to video 
video. Let's see which one gets the square first. We got it first on the SE again. So let's go ahead and flip our camera first on the SE. I didn't flip it back in time, but let's go over to portrait now. So let's tap on portrait. Portrait is first with the square on the SE as well. And then I wanna shoot a video and open it. So we're gonna start shooting a video right here. We're just gonna let it run for about six or seven seconds. And then we're gonna open it up, see which one saves to the camera roll first, and then which one opens up first. So it looks like it saved first on the iPhone 11 and opened up and started playing first. It looked like about the same time. So it saved it to the camera roll first on the iPhone 11. Let's see if it's the same for photos. That was about even, about even for both. All right, so now let's test out the RAM. So we have four gigabytes on both, but we do have an A15 Bionic on the iPhone SE, which is proven to be more efficient than the A13 Bionic on the iPhone 11. So let's see if there's a difference in RAM and opening up the applications we already opened. So let's start off with Twitter. Twitter looks like it was the same. We were on the message still right there. Instagram, Instagram, no relaunch on either. We're just looking for relaunches here. We're not looking to see which one opens up first. We're just looking to see if there's a relaunch on any of the applications we open. So there you go. We had a relaunch on Twitch, whereas we did not on the iPhone 11. Interesting. Let's go to Amazon. No relaunch there. TikTok. No relaunch there. ESPN. Nope, nothing there. Let's go to Subway Surfers. A relaunch on both for Subway Surfers. Let's go to Crash Bandicoot. A relaunch for both on Crash Bandicoot as well. Interesting. So four gigabytes of RAM isn't really getting it done. Let's go to Asphalt, relaunch there as well. So not very good for the RAM on either device here. Let's go to PUBG Mobile. And it's not like it's been very long since we had these opened up here. So a relaunch, it looks like a full relaunch here for PUBG as well. Let's go ahead and try Call of Duty, which was really just opened up. So yeah, no relaunch there on Call of Duty. Let's try NBA. NBA looks like a full relaunch for both as well. So the RAM, pretty disappointing here, honestly, for both phones. Now, I also want to do a Safari web browsing test. So we're going to open up Safari here and see which one opens up websites first. So you can see there, it just opened up first on the SE, but we're going to test out other websites as well. So let's start off with just apple.com. Let's go ahead and tap on apple.com in three, two, one. Press at the same time on both, and it was first there on the SE to fully load. We're gonna go to ESPN.com at the same time here, see which one loads up first. Looks like it's first to show something on the SE. Yeah, fully loaded there on the SE, still loading on the iPhone 11. There we go, so way behind the SE. We're gonna go to my website, dailyifix.com, press at the same time, and that loaded instantly on both. So it was open recently, maybe that's why. So no difference in speed there. So that website, let's go to TechCrunch, which we had open when we first launched the Safari application. Let's press at the same time. And look, that was first on the SE maybe, but the iPhone 11 again shows that ad, whereas the iPhone SE does not, which is pretty interesting. Let's go into one of these articles to see if there's any difference in speed. They both load pretty much instantly. And then the last one we're gonna test is IGN.com, pressed at the same time. It looks like it's first on the SE for that one. So pretty big difference actually in the IGN website here. So look at that, still loading on the iPhone 11. We fully loaded up on the iPhone SE a few seconds ago. So pretty interesting results there in our Safari browsing test. All right, so now we're just gonna open up a ton of different tabs and see if there's a difference in the smoothness of Safari web browsing when we switch between those tabs. All right, so as you can see, we have 28 tabs opened up on both phones and we have a lot of YouTube videos and pretty intensive things. We're gonna go ahead and switch between the tabs and see if there's any lag in either phone here to see if there's any difference in speed of Safari. So I'm not really seeing any difference so far, no choppiness in either one. So it looks like there actually might be some choppiness in the iPhone 11. It's hard to tell. You guys let me know in a comment down below if you see any difference in the speed here or any type of choppiness on either phone. It's kind of hard to tell. It's kind of hard to look at both of them, but tell me if you guys see any difference in the speed here of Safari when we go to switch between these different tabs here. They both perform pretty well, actually. I pressed refresh right there on the iPhone SE. But yeah, not really a big difference here. It looks like there might be some lag on the iPhone 11 more than the SE, but it's really hard to tell. Both perform pretty well, even with a lot of tabs opened up at the same time. I wanna download the speed test application, so we're gonna search for speed at the same time in the App Store, and you can see there it popped up first on the iPhone SE. So we're gonna go into this and see which one opens this up first. So that one was pretty close. We're gonna download at the same time. See if there's any difference to prompt us for our password. So nothing there. So yeah, fully downloaded on the SE, still downloading 
on the iPhone 11. So a nice difference there in speed as well. So we're running a speed test here and we're doing both at separate times just so they don't interfere with each other. So you can see there we got a 160 and a 126 on the iPhone 11. Now let's try it out on the iPhone SE. So we got a higher download on the SE, but less than half of the upload speed as the iPhone 11. Pretty interesting. We also had a 0% loss on the SE, but a 1.6% loss on the 11. All right, so now we're gonna do a Geekbench test. We're gonna see which one finishes this benchmark first and also which one gets the higher score. So let's press on run benchmark and three, two, one. Press at the same time. Let's see which one finishes first. All right, so we finished first there on the iPhone SE. Still waiting on the iPhone 11 here. You can see our scores on the SE, a 1721 on the single core and a 4443 on the multi-core. So we're still waiting on the iPhone 11. So there we go, finally on the iPhone 11. So at least a 15 second difference in terms of which one finished the test first. You can see there the scores are also much higher here on the iPhone SE. So we're gonna pick these up now. And yeah, the iPhone 11 is still much hotter than the iPhone SE in terms of to the touch of the back of the phone. So there you have it, guys. That is the iPhone 11 versus the iPhone SE third generation. I really didn't expect the iPhone SE to win by that much over the iPhone 11, but the SE really impressed me and the speed test. And that actually makes me more excited to do more speed tests. So if you guys wanna see more, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss those future speed tests and comparisons with the iPhone SE third generation. Also, let me know what you thought about the speed test down there in those comments below. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.